I'm kind of doing a little misdirection here because I'm going to talk about these types of caddisflies for a little bit, and then I'm going to talk about another type of caddisfly that yeah. I just learned about yes yesterday or a couple days ago in putting together my uh, news digest that you guys might have seen. Yeah. So well, these are one of my favorite type of flies because they're so popular in fly fishing throughout the world. They're they're really cool. Yeah, so they are really cool. These are um, caddisflies. A lot, many of us know they're a um, very famous adaptation of lip building a little shelter for themselves. Um, of, as you can see with this one, of the things it can find in its environment, snail shells, different plant fibers. Um, you can see a really diverse uh, set of caddisfly shelters, depending on the species of cat caddisfly, depending on the environment it finds itself in. Um, really amazing, cool shelters, and a really fun thing that we often find when we're sampling vernal pools and stuff like that. But a type of caddisfly that I didn't know about before were the net weaving caddisflies. These are caddisflies that primarily or pretty much exclusively inhabit streams. And instead of building a little shelter um, that's mobile, um, made of whatever is around them and foraging that way, they forage by making this kind of net with a mouth that's open on the side of the upstream side and let water flow through their net. Um, and they kind of forage that way. They're almost filter feeders that way, although they're not doing the filtering themselves. They've made a uh, kind of shelter for themselves that also filters food out. Um, Another kind of interesting <laughs> underwater picture here of a, of a caddisfly net. You can see in the middle here, the kind of opening. Um, it's kind of being held open by the current. That's what you'll often see um, with these net weaving caddisflies. Um, cool thing about them, you can't really see the mesh at this level of zoom, um, but they actually, different genera of these caddisflies build nets with different size mesh for different types of food, be that like algae, diatoms, um, perhaps even little tiny arthropods. I'm not sure whether they eat those because usually caddisflies don't tend to be predators if I'm not mistaken. Um, but you can see here what it kind of looks like um, in real time. Um, this one looks like it might have ruptured, might be unoccupied. Um, but yeah, kind of really cool type of caspal I didn't know about. And these are actually kind of important indicator species. Um, you can imagine if you're surveying a river and you find these caddisflies, you know there's a certain amount of organic matter flowing through that area to support them. Um, so they're actually a part of some, uh, some different indexes for the health of freshwater streams. So it's, uh, an important part of that is sample, sampling the uh, the net making caddisflies, um, and so as you can imagine, with these caddisflies, they're just as vulnerable as the kind of foraging caddisflies are if they're out of their shelter, um, and because they can't move their shelters, they're even a little more vulnerable to this. So um, things such as another caddisfly, which has lost its shelter, um, trying to take over an existing shelter can create more conflict than it would with a foraging caddisfly, which of course the, the one who's having its shelter taken away is just going to flee most of the time or retreat into its shelter, wait, and then flee later. Um, and with these, um, detritus can be stuck in them, they can get damaged, and that can make a lot more conflict between the actual larvae themselves. Um, so, yeah, and I'm just going to show real quick um, this video that was in, uh, that I posted in the uh, News Digest this week, just as a kind of fun thing to leave us off. Um, but you can see here, uh, caddis larva, one caddis larva throwing this kind of large obstruction, this little pebble here, um, into the net of another. And you can actually see the mesh in these. So these are probably eating pretty large uh, they're more specialized for really large chunks of organic matter relatively. Um, and this will go on for almost two minutes of this caddisfly larva 
trying to get this pebble out of the uh, out of the net. And you can imagine how hard this is because this is happening against the current. The current is pushing this pebble into the cast flies net. So you can this uh, this is the type of thing that these cast flies will run into very often. If you're if the opening of your net is against the current, you'll get a lot of food in there, but you'll also get a lot of stuff you don't want in there. So yeah, I'll let this play out until this guy um, saves himself here. And that is the net weaving caddisfly, something I didn't know about before. Um, really cool little corner of insect diversity. Um, and as many little corners of insect diversity are, an important one for indicating the health of our ecosystems. There. <laughs> Still got 25 more seconds there. There he goes. All right, that's that.